One third of all food goes uneaten, while two billion people are facing food insecurity worldwide. While many things contribute to this issue, consumers are responsible for 40 to 50 percent of all food wasted in most high-income countries. And while shocking, it's good news. It means that we have the power to reduce the impacts of wasted food on an individual level. Food Waste Podvention is made possible through partnerships with Washington State University Vancouver's student-run radio station, Coog Radio, and the Washington State Department of Ecology. For questions about the information discussed in this episode, contact info at clarkgreennaybors.org. Hey everyone, welcome to Food Waste Podvention. I'm Austin with the Clark County Composter Recycler Program. And I'm Bethany with the Clark County Green Neighbors Program. We're AmeriCorps, serving the solid waste education and outreach team, and we're here to talk food waste in honor of Food Waste Prevention Week, a national sustainability campaign where 48 states, 11 countries, and over 600 organizations inspire their communities to stop food waste in the first place. Tune in to hear our experts speak. It's Food Waste Prevention Week. Today, I want to welcome our guest, Stacy Tignar Loy. Stacy is a Washington State University Extension SNAP Ed Nutrition Education Program Coordinator. Stacy, tell us a bit about your background. Thank you for having me here. So, my background is a little bit different than most nutritional educators. Mm-hmm. I've been a graphic designer for over two decades, mm-hmm. but food has really been important in my life. And one of those things that I've been involved with the food system, the mm-hmm. local food system here in Clark County. Mm-hmm. And five years ago, I was asked to come on to the SNAP Ed program at WSU Extension. And what that is, is I became a nutritional educator Mm -hmm. serving low income individuals and families. Mm -hmm. And basically, I just teach people how to eat healthy on a budget. Mm -hmm. Um, We do some other things in the community. We introduce people to the SNAP Match program at our local Far, uh, farmers markets mm-hmm. where you can double your produce dollars with the match program if mm-hmm. you're snap ebt um eligible and then about a year ago i started doing more um food waste prevention work in our community because it just makes sense um to you know not waste food mm-hmm. when you're when you're on a budget and i think that's all of us these days Oh, seriously. Yeah. Say that yeah. Say that again. So <laughs> another thing, it's I think that I bring in some commu- um, a c- creativity when it comes to food. Mm-hmm. I've had a Twitch cooking channel. Oh, wow. I do yeah. creative. Yeah. yeah, this is it's been a while, but <laughs> I was kind of the um, uh, one of the first people that started doing uh, Twitch cooking. Yeah, it's mostly gamers, right? Yeah, it's mostly gamers. And so, you know, I'd spend a couple hours doing some creative cooking. Mm -hmm. Um, I do some kind of crazy cakes for my friends and family, (laughs) and I've actually won a couple contests. Um, So kind of the... um, is that cake, but just on a local <laughs> level. So those, I've done those are always cake. fun. Yeah, they're fun. They're they're very interesting and fun. Where so. can people find these cakes? So Do you have social media? On my Instagram, mm-hmm. it's retelling the recipe. Mm-hmm. So it's like retelling somebody's recipe. It's retelling the recipe. And it's Stacy Tigner. And yeah, I do everything from uh, a lot of cooking when i'm traveling Mm -hmm. um i bring back recipes but um for recently i've been doing some very creative cakes yes they they're beautiful i've i've got the chance to see some of them and we'll include that information in the show notes as well yeah and uh just out of curiosity your background in creative cooking is that something that you taught yourself and just kind of learned on your own or did you ever get any some like formal instruction do you know i had friends in the industry that i picked up things here and there but a lot of it is just if i if i saw something that looked interesting and fun to do i would just do it and figure it out (laughs) personal Um, curiosity and initiative personal curiosity (laughs) totally and i think making things that make people happy so both you know it's you know delicious It's fun to eat and Mm -hmm. share with others. It's just really important for me to, um, I think, feed others creatively. You're wonderful at that. Every time I've been around Stacy, she's fed me. Fun fact. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It makes me, yeah, Mm -hmm. I feel good feeding people. Yep. It's it's a good thing. Well, you know, as as you know, we're here for Food Waste Prevention Week. So 
we invited you uh, here today to get details on your creative approach to, uh, you know, quote unquote, plan overs um, and how to freshen up yesterday's meal. So thank you for joining us. Thank you. And we would just, we all want to know um, what exactly are plan overs? So plan overs are, um, you know, we, we always say leftovers, but plan overs, you can take those leftovers. And when you're going to a restaurant and you bring something home, start thinking about how you can reuse those mm -hmm. later um, when you have leftovers at home. Um, one thing I like to talk about is when you are meal planning, start thinking about those plan overs. So mm -hmm. if you make something on Sunday that can be eaten throughout the week, that is a plan over. And that is just planning ahead to make sure that you are eating everything that you bring into your home. So that is one thing, um, plan overs. It's, I think if you start calling them plan overs, mm -hmm. maybe you start thinking more about what you're, how you're going to use them mm -hmm. um, throughout yeah, the week. Planning at the forefront of the word. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So that's, I think, a really important kind of outtake from today is start using plan overs instead of leftovers. Yes. New mm -hmm. vocab term. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Add it to your, add it to your dictionary. Yeah. Uh, so I guess I'm curious if you have any insights as to why leftovers, now coined plan overs, uh, why they're ending up in the trash. There's a lot of reasons. And I can say for myself, it's the planning. So going back to mm -hmm. planning. So a lot of times when you're going to the grocery store, if you don't have a list and you're just doing impulsive mm -hmm. purchases, you don't really know where the, that food is going to end up, especially fresh produce mm -hmm. and vegetables and meats. Uh, so not being able to plan out your week mm -hmm. and the things that you purchase you might forget about and they might go bad. Um, I know for myself, keeping an organized refrigerator is great. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you, and you might feel this yourselves, how many times I've lost things in the refrigerator. Things get pushed back, you lose them. When you find them, they're well past their mm -hmm. um, the date that you can eat them. Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, personally, I think it's also just, uh, it, you know, human nature, like impulsiveness. Um, so even if you do have a plan, I know sometimes it's hard to stick to it. Exactly. And so even though it's like, okay, this thing I was planning to use, uh, I just really don't feel like eating that today. Right. So then you make something else and right. then you just right. never get to that right. item. And that's exactly, that's a really good point. Um, and, you know, there's a little bit of mindfulness that happens. So, mm -hmm. you know, it is okay to, you know, change your plan halfway through the week, but you might have to think about, okay, those chicken breasts that I purchased that I thought I was going to have Wednesday, I don't think I'm going to get to those. So put them in the freezer. Mm -hmm. And that's a good way to make sure that they are going to be good later on. So absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We, we talked about that in a previous episode, just like the the magic of a freezer like it what, is. you know what that can really do for you it is yeah i use the freezer all the time it's like especially with um if you're at the farmer's market and it's berry season coming up oh, yeah. if there's a really good deal on berries and you mm -hmm. don't think you're going to eat them all put them on a cookie sheet um definitely pick out if you see any mold or anything mm -hmm. on the berries pick those out or any mushy ones pick those out put them on a cookie sheet put them in the freezer and then you can put them in a baggie for smoothies, for salads, for anything after that. So mm -hmm. that's a little a, a, a few tips I'm going to throw in there. Yeah. Our podcast is very tip friendly. Tips okay, are, good. Tips are our favorite. Oh, I've got tips. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I'm wondering, what are some of the key tips that you found for tackling people not using their leftovers and throwing them in the trash? How do you educate on the subject? You know, it's... Again, another bit of mindfulness. It's mm -hmm. like planning is going to be your best friend. Mm -hmm. um, you, if you plan out your week, plan if you have a family, have them help out, mm -hmm. maybe get them to help with the cooking and have them help with ideas on how they can do the leftovers. You know, I like to, so one thing, keeping the fridge organized is really important. When you have leftovers, one thing that um, I like to do is I usually put them in a container that I can see through. So mm -hmm. I have glass containers these days. So I'll put things in glass containers. I'll put them in the front of the refrigerator where I can see them. Um, if you're having a problem figuring out what to do with those leftovers. So a lot of things you can add into an omelet the next day, or you can add to a stir fry if there's vegetables. 
So my big thing is doing stir fries. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times you could use those leftovers in stir fries or in pastas. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it kind of depends on what that leftover is. But I have to say my my most favorite tool in the whole world is the internet. <laughs> and I just, if I don't know what to do or if I need some creative help, mm -hmm. I'll plug in what it is I have and you know, how can I can recreate that. And yeah, the internet totally helps in that case. Do you want to know my favorite tool aside from the internet? Stacy's cooking with leftovers recipe book. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a, a couple recipes and work. So this is new to our program, um, the food waste reduction program. Mm -hmm. And so we are constantly you know, adding new recipes, finding more ideas. Mm -hmm. The two recipes that we have in there that are my favorite are the savory pancake pan um, recipe. And that is basically just a really simple pancake batter. And then you add leftovers. So if you have veggies or a lot of times I'll do my ugly ends mm -hmm. in these. Mm -hmm. So like, let's say the stem of the broccoli, mm -hmm. I will chop up the broccoli, I'll saute it, and I'll add it into the pancake mix. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for some people, they might wonder, savory pancakes, that kind of sounds weird. Mm -hmm. But if you take a look, most cultures um, have some sort of savory pancake. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at the crepes, if you look at um, scallion pa pancakes. Mm -hmm. um, latkes. Latkes, exactly. Yeah. So kind of, you know, keep an open mind. Um, and I usually will add, you know, oof, if I had stir fry the night before, mm -hmm. I'll chop up the veggies and I'll throw that in there. I actually, this is kind of weird, but it's <laughs> my kid loves it. We do taco night quite mm -hmm. a bit and we'll have some leftover meat and adding leftover taco meat mm -hmm. to the pancake batter, chop up some peppers, some onions. I add some pepperoncinis to it. You gently mix it in and you make these pancakes and it's a savory, it's like a kind of a taco pancake. Taco pancake. Wow. Yeah. And <laughs> what's nice is if you make a bunch, mm -hmm. you can put them in the freezer and reheat them in a toaster. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of an, a really good on the go um, quick snack if you need one. And I was lucky enough to get to taste these yeah. at our last event. Yeah. They are phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you can totally just, there's so many different options you can do. And they'll be sharing the recipe. Um, and you can kind of take a look at the one option that we have um, in the recipe. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's fantastic. Um, so, I know that a lot of concerns, uh, I think a lot of people have concerns about leftovers in the sense of, you know, if they don't eat them the next day and it's been a few days, then it's like, is it still good? Right. Are right. there health risks to using something that's been maybe um, neglected for a few days? Right. So um, general rule of thumb, if you have a leftover, um, you always want to get it in the fridge before the two hour mark. Mm -hmm. After the two hour mark, then you're getting it's like. You know, you're getting into some bacterial issues. Mm -hmm. um, it just might not be the best. So get when you, you know, if you're out to eat, mm -hmm. you have leftovers, put them in the fridge right away as soon as you get home at home. Yeah, just don't go over that two hour mark. Then, and this is something, this is advice from the USDA. Most leftovers are going to be good between three and four days if they've been stored correctly. Mm -hmm. um, but I always tell everybody, use your best judgment. Use your nose, use your eyes. If you question it at all, mm -hmm. then go ahead and take it to the next step, and that would be composting. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. We are uh, huge lovers, huge fans and practicers of compost. Right. For anyone who's listened to the episodes up until this point. Right. Um, so that's, that's always the last step. But the first step is, you know, feeding yourself. Right. Making sure that you're not wasting your money. Exactly. No, yeah. this is such a huge thing. It's you, everything that you toss out is just like tossing money out of your wallet. Mm -hmm. um, you've purchased this food. Um, you had good intentions, most likely, with yes. this food. <laughs> and you just, you know, that is, I think the average family will waste at least $1,600 a year mm -hmm. in food waste. And so that is kind of a tough one you think about it on quite a few different levels. Yeah. 
So we've hinted a little bit about these in-person events where Stacy presents and talks to us about different ways that you can creatively reuse leftovers. Uh, and we're actually hosting one on April 3rd in honor of Food Waste Prevention Week. So unfortunately for our listeners, that will have already passed by the time this episode airs. But nonetheless, I was still hoping you can tell us what guests will have walked away knowing after that event. So the things that we're going to be talking about. So for us, the most important thing is preventing food waste. So we're going to be giving you tips and tricks on how to do that. And some of that is how to organize your fridge and pantry. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to go into how to stretch your produce. So a lot of food waste might be because you did not store your your food properly. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have some tips on how to do that. Um, another thing that we talk about is understanding best buy dates. Mm -hmm. And then another thing we're going to talk about is creative uses of leftovers. Mm -hmm. So we have some examples for um, what to do with like a roasted chicken. There's mm -hmm. so many things that you mm -hmm. can do with a roasted chicken. I usually purchase one on the weekend and I tear it apart and I use it in pastas, casseroles. I do um, some lettuce wraps. Those are kind Ooh. of my favorite thing to mm -hmm. use. Um, we also talk about how to use leftover veggies. And again, kind of the same thing is just kind of giving you creative hints on mm -hmm. how you can um, incorporate the veggie leftovers in mm -hmm. pasta, in casseroles, soups, and all sorts of things. I feel like this like reframing of what a leftover can be turned into that you mm -hmm. promote and inspire in these workshops is just so important to reframe how people are thinking about this food. If you think, you know, I have leftover asparagus that's cooked in my fridge. Right. Well, I don't want to just eat plain asparagus, you know, and that might have been my thought or the notion that I had before having attended Stacy's workshops. And now I'm like, well, what pasta is going to go good with asparagus? I could make like a cold pasta salad um, right. and just bringing that excitement back into it makes it feel like the same energy and excitement you get having just purchased it at the grocery store with that intention of what you're cooking it for, you know? Yeah, it's like it's kind of make it a challenge. And yeah. that's kind of how I got into it. It's like I did a Green Neighbors Challenge a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and it's kind of why I'm here. And <laughs> it was it was an awesome, it was a great event. And basically it was a challenge. It was three weeks and you had to come up with creative ways to prevent food waste. Mm -hmm. And that got me thinking. And that's when I started making my cauliflower leaf chutney. Ooh. and my broccoli slaw and there's just other, there's a whole world of things out there that you could create that mm -hmm. you might not know and just doing a little digging you mm -hmm. know coming to our class uh looking things up on the internet and finding out how you can reuse those leftovers or actually even the scraps from your cooking mm -hmm. are you are you hungry austin this is making me hungry yeah, you know, I haven't had lunch yet, so uh, <laughs> definitely. That's right. <laughs> we'll um, find ways to reuse all of our lunchbox scraps after this. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but, you know, it is interesting, though, just um, kind of the culture that we've... And again, it is based off of how we're raised. It's based off of based off of our culture. But I think a lot of us, uh, we get so used to, you know, like the, the ends of things, just, oh, you just throw that away. Mm -hmm. um, when there are so many different uses, you know, you can you can boil it and make a stock, vegetable stock. Mm -hmm. You know, you're talking about that chicken. Right. You can take the bones at the very end, right. boil that down, make a chicken stock. So, uh, you know, and, and even like the stems for broccoli, like there's just a lot of people don't even, don't even want or even think about eating that. Yeah. Right. Um, right. You know, there's actually just a funny little story. Um, <laughs> I got so used to going to the store and just, and just finding like big heads of broccoli. And then I was living in Seattle at the time and, and I went to PCC. A great store, you know, they have a lot of really healthy uh, options, but the broccoli they would sell had these really long stems. And I'm like, I don't want to pay for stems. <laughs> like, you know, you're paying per pound. Why would I want to buy in the, and the stock is the heaviest part. So anyways, but it's so useful. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. But a lot of people don't think that way. No, you know, it's I'd, I'd my watch people part. actually walk up there and snap off mm -hmm. the stems mm -hmm. just so that they wouldn't have to pay for it. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> crazy talk. Um, no, so yeah, 
I actually, when I go get broccoli anymore, I look for those long stems because there's so much you can do with them. Um, depending on the freshness, usually you have to peel off that outer layer, but that the stock itself is just as nutritious as anything else. Mm -hmm. And it actually, um, the texture might be a little bit better for kids. I can tell you oh, that. Interesting. Um, some kids don't like the the flowers, the florets of the oh, broccoli, yeah. the mm -hmm. texture, but you know, slice them up. You can actually, if it's big enough, you can slice them up and dip them. Like, I love that. <laughs> Again, I do the, the slaw recipe mm -hmm. where you just slice it up into um, smaller pieces, julienne, and add that to carrots and um, onions and do just a simple slaw sauce or slaw and just do a simple slaw dressing. Um, but yeah, it's like, it's probably the best part of the broccoli. Yeah. That's our hot take, everyone. If you're not eating your broccoli stems, you're doing it wrong. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Another one that I've picked up while, while we're sharing tips and having a good time. This is our last episode. We're feeling loose. We're feeling free. Yeah. Um, I love to wash my carrots and then use the peels and salad. Perfect. Or this is one that I know you're a fan of, uh, scrubbing your potatoes and using the skins for potato skins. Yes. Which is a literal, that's a food they serve as an entree at restaurants. Right, right. And we pay for that, yet most people will throw them in the compost. Yeah. At Thanksgiving, when we do mashed potatoes, I will save all of the potato, the peeled potato skins. And then if you just kind of saute, fry them up mm -hmm. in a fry pan, or if you have, you know, these days, take it advantage of your air fryer yep. mm. toss them a little oil and air fry them they become crunchy little chips yeah and one of the things i like to do is i like to top my my egg omelets with them or clever you know just gosh top your salad with them mm -hmm. there's if you season them so there's quite a few different things you can do with potato skins oh, we're so lucky do to not have toss you in. them out <laughs> yes no. yeah this is perfect this is perfect yeah so on a personal note, uh, aside from the amazing tips and tricks that we all just discussed, what are some ways that you've reduced food waste in your home? A few of the things that I've done in my household that has really helped with reducing food waste is, you know, I actually, and this might be hard for some, I actually shop more mm -hmm. and buy less. Mm -hmm. um, so that is, and that's just something that I enjoy going to the grocery store and buying fresh produce and cooking, you know, and using it for the next couple of days. Mm -hmm. um, probably the biggest thing that's helped over the last couple years mm -hmm. is keeping my fridge clean, which is really hard. Mm -hmm. But also having, I have a bin on the main shelf of my refrigerator. And every couple of days I'll go through and do a little inventory mm -hmm. in my refrigerator and I'll look in the veggie drawer and I'll look and see, you know, if I have what lunch meats I have. And if there's something that I should be using before, mm -hmm. um, or if there's something that I should be using sooner than later, I will put it in this bin. Mm -hmm. So when I open the refrigerator and I am preparing a meal, if I could incorporate it into that meal, I'll do it. Or mm -hmm. I might just figure out a meal to use with everything that in little bin. And it's Ooh, that's a challenge it's a challenge and that's what i like um yeah, kind of like you mentioned you just go on the internet and be like oh, yeah i've got this this and this what can i what can i do with exactly and that's really all you need to do mm -hmm. is just you know type out what you have in that bin and see what it comes up with a lot less intimidating than i i think people think that it is yeah yeah i think one thing that's been hard over the years so recently i my my dog just passed I'm and so I sorry. never knew how important he was to food waste around the house. Mm -hmm. And I finally figured that out as I was eating popcorn on my couch <laughs> and looked down and saw how much popcorn was left <laughs> over on the floor. And, you know, granted, all of that's now going into the compost, but I really, really didn't appreciate my dog as much as I should have when it when it came to um, um, dropping things on the floor. He was yeah. a food waste hero. He was a food yeah. waste Cooper. <laughs> Shout out to Cooper. Cooper. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't yes. even have to try. He was happy <laughs> yeah, to do it. Didn't exactly. Have to try. <laughs> yeah. One of the um, tips that we share in one of our composting classes is, you know, if you can't get the rest of the peanut butter out of a peanut butter jar, oh, no. give it to your dog. Mm -hmm. They'll do it. <laughs> they'll they'll yeah. do it. Yeah. No, they will. <laughs> they will do their best. No water and... wasted. Exactly. No. no. Exactly. So, yeah, I mean, you know, we, we've got tips and tricks and, and oftentimes those 
can and do translate into habits. But if you had to choose, which I know it's going to be hard, <laughs> what what single habit change do you think is would be the most impactful for our audience to to learn about and adopt? You know, what is oh that's a hard one. Mm -hmm. Um there's a lot out there and I think over time, yeah, if this is something new and you're going to start trying to reduce food waste in your own home, it is important that you choose one or two things at first mm -hmm. and like you know, that's a good question because you don't want to get too overwhelmed because there's a lot of ways you can reduce food waste. Pick what works for you. And so that could be anything. It could be that, you know, it's your shopping. You change your shopping habits. Um, for me, I think the biggest thing was having my refrigerator organized and going in and making sure I wasn't wasting anything and, you know, doing that inventory every couple days. Um, but it's going to depend on you and your family or you as an individual, how you can do that in your own household. And I think that, um, you know, looking at uh, food dates, it's mm -hmm. like, a lot of people don't pay attention to the food date or pay attention to the food dates to the point where they look at the date and if it's, you know, past the date, they'll throw mm -hmm. it out. You don't really have to do that. And, you know, there's definitely some tips on how to do that on the internet and in our booklet. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think it's kind of a personal journey for a lot of people. No, I definitely agree. And, and you know, thinking about it now, I'm just like, well, you might suggest in your mind, that single habit that you think is the most impactful, but you know, 20, 30% of our listeners might already be doing that thing right. and they're looking for their the next, next step, step, their next right. habit. Yeah. So it, no, I, I agree. I think some people just need to start with like, I need to start composting mm -hmm. versus like, I need to reuse my scraps or right. I need to, you know, so there's a lot of, uh, a lot of suggestions, but it's, yeah. it's everybody's personal journey. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Start where you're comfortable. Definitely. Do what you can because it's a lot easier to give up when you overwhelm yourself with right. all these new behavior and habit changes. Right. Food waste prevention, it, it will become intuitive as you continue learning and growing yeah. and being gentle with yourself and being patient with yourself for picking up these new skills. I have to say one thing, um, we're lucky enough to um, our the city, mm -hmm. Waste Connections, lets us compost all of our food mm -hmm. um, into our our green bins. Um, we I've been doing that for quite some time. Mm -hmm. I have I always share this one tip because to me it's really important. I sometimes get overwhelmed by food waste on mm -hmm. my countertops, so I always have just the smallest container. Usually one of the like the curry soup containers that you get oh, on takeout. <laughs> that is my food waste, and when I fill that up. I take it out. And so that's maybe one once a day or once every other day. But I just I like to share that because I think people might have the big bins on their their yeah, countertops the kitchen countertop and pails. Yeah. then it's you know, it might be there for too long. But mm -hmm. having that small container and it's the clear container, it helps me to get it from the counter to the recycling mm -hmm. bin. This is a here. tip for me. I yeah. just got scolded by my husband for having about five pounds of compost in the freezer that I had to take out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I went and got more groceries. And of course, freezer food, our favorite food. Um, and I had no space for them. So mm -hmm. you've taught me something yes. new today, Stacey. You always do every yes. time I see you. <laughs> So can you give us any insights on what's on the horizon for WSU and their food reduction campaign? We have a wonderful professor up at the Skagit County Extension, mm -hmm. and she has been working on food waste prevention for the last couple of years. And she is rallying WSU as a whole um, on how to spread the word about food waste reduction um, across all the campuses in Washington. Um, so we're hoping that in the next year that's going to ramp up and we're going to have our own WSU food waste prevention week and month. Um, we are part of it now, but we're hoping to, um, it, we, we're hoping that it's bigger next year. Mm -hmm. One thing that we have at the WSU Clark County extension on 78th street at the 78th street heritage farm is we are working with green businesses and we have a compost hub 
And that's for residents that don't have access to composting in their own homes. And they can bring their food waste to the farm and drop it off and in one of our bins. One and of one of three. One of three bins. That's right. It yeah. keeps growing. It keeps growing, which shows that, you know, people are using it and right. they have access to this resource they didn't have before. Thank you, WSU. Thank you, Green Businesses. Thank you, 78th Street Heritage Farm. Yay. <laughs> yes. That's where my five pounds of freezer compost went yesterday. That's okay. <laughs> do, do you live in an apartment? I live in multifamily housing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, That's... so this is also a great resource for people who are maybe within our city of Vancouver, city of Ridgefield limits, who have access to organic right. curbside, but technically don't right. because they're not an individual residency. They're in mm. an apartment or some kind of shared living. Yeah, and, uh, you know, as we come to a close, um, thank you again, Stacy. You are a wonderful final guest. Thank yeah. you. I really appreciate but, you having um, me here. Of course. We always like to end every episode with uh, your personal reflection. What does food waste prevention mean to you? Food waste prevention means a lot to me. Um, it's one of the things that I can do personally to help prevent or curb the effects of of climate change. Mm -hmm. um, you know, every little bit that goes into the landfill is you know, of food, it's creating methane gas. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's one little thing that I can do to keep food out of the landfills mm -hmm. to help with with climate change. Um, another thing is when you look at our society today and there's so many people that are food insecure, it just makes my brain hurt thinking about all the food we're wasting. Mm -hmm. And so, again, there's other ways that you can um, find out in your community how to donate food, which we didn't talk about today. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, what is it? 41% of the United States food is wasted. Mm -hmm. And just think of all those people that would, you know, that need it. Um, another thing is I just appreciate food too much to let it go to waste. It's like, I appreciate the food you make as well. Yes. I mean, that is, you know, food should be enjoyed. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that we have, we're in a society too, that we don't take enough time to think about what we're eating mm -hmm. and how we're preparing it and who we're eating it with. Mm -hmm. So, you know, part of me hopes that some of this food waste prevention um, thought can go into making um, meal times mm -hmm. more of a community event mm -hmm. and something some place where we can talk about where our food is going. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really important. I don't think we sit down and enjoy our meals enough together. No, absolutely, and I was going to speak on that as well. It's like we 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 live in such a busy you know society and and we're constantly on the go and. We have all these things that are that are fighting for our attention. Mm -hmm. um, we're always trying to make time for this, make time for that. Um, and so, I guess what we're really trying to say here is, if if you're able and you notice uh, some time in your schedule that you can dedicate to meal planning and focusing on your food and mm -hmm. and trying to eat healthy, try your best to do it. But mm -hmm. you know, we understand that everybody's busy. Right. You know, some of us have to work multiple jobs just to you know, pay the rent, pay the bills. Mm -hmm. And it's really, really hard. And we're just looking for a convenient solution to, to food. And, and right. Once, once you, uh, hopefully start to think about how your food gets to your plate, you know, it'll, it'll become convenient in time in and time. it'll save money in time. Right. But I think it's all a journey that right. we're going on as a society. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on today, Stacy. Thank you for inviting me. It was great talking about food. Absolutely. Oh, yes. uh, so stick around. Austin and I are going to be chatting a bit more about what we've learned over this podcast series right after this break. The average family throws out $1,500 of food every year. That's a lot. Imagine what you could do with extra cash. There are simple ways to reduce your food waste and increase your savings. It starts with a meal plan, a menu, a shopping list, and ends with a little creativity, fresh recipes, ingredient swaps, and new kitchen skills. Get tips to reduce food waste and make your dollar go further. Know the cost. Go to usefoodwell.org to learn more. It has been so wonderful to go on this journey of learning about food waste prevention with all of you and with our guest. 
For our last episode, we'd like to take the opportunity to recap everything we've learned so far. Speaking with Saray about the food cycle in episode one was both inspirational and educational. We learned that a sustainable food cycle includes prevention, recovery, and regeneration. Food waste in the landfill creates pollution that contributes to climate change, uh, methane gas. That it's important to prevent food waste in the first place through recovery and distribution of edible food, through means such as rescue for human use, upcycling for animals, compost, or digesting. And like Saray talked about, the use of regenerative farming practices is vital to this system to deter waste in the food system at large. If successfully implemented, a sustainable food cycle, such as the one Saray hopes to create, can reduce up to 58% of landfill methane emissions released into the atmosphere and roughly 8% of total greenhouse gas emissions produced. 8%! That is still a staggering statistic to me. And there's so much we can do to help with food waste prevention. Remember Selena and Shannon and how they spoke on smart shopping to reduce food waste in episode two? Some of that discussion included insights on the importance of planning ahead. They talked about how taking initiative beforehand by making a meal prep schedule that works for them and their family saves time, money, and reduces wasted food. We also learned how to buy healthy food at a reduced price through Shannon, and we addressed the challenges of food insecurity in our current system. All very important topics. Exactly. Another important topic was the topic of kids. Having kids can make things more challenging when trying to reduce your family's food waste. Uh, so here are some things we learned about um, what our schools and families in Clark County are doing to successfully reduce food waste. So as we know, kids can be picky eaters. They'll lose interest fast and in general, increase your family's wasted food. So we learned some tips from Tina, such as the superpowers of your freezer mm -hmm. and how she's found success engaging her kids in the meal planning process and during mealtime to reduce their food waste. We also learned from Sammy about the amazing work that the green schools in our area are doing to curb food waste produced in the lunchroom. From share tables to in-class room demonstrations, they've been able to turn a majority of the students in Clark County into food waste prevention heroes. And they truly are. Those kids blow my mind with how knowledgeable they are about this system. Yeah. Well, and, and not to mention, like, they are generally concerned and care. Mm -hmm. um, most definitely. I have never seen a kid get so excited over half rotting stinky food as I did when we were harvesting our digesters at Discovery she Middle really, School. She loved that stuff. She really did, yeah. which, you know, to yeah. each their own. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, and then we, we learned that while we can do all of this work, uh, we can still waste food by not storing it properly. So, what did we learn about how to store food to reduce waste in the first place? Well, in our episode with Pete Dubois, local compost guru and creator of this show's jingle, we learned the big three of what to consider when storing food. So temperature, ethylene, and airflow. We learned how to think about where you're putting your food in your fridge or on the counter and how to extend its life, um, as well as the best ways to store that food once it's in the right spot, in addition to some of Pete's favorite tips. Mm -hmm. And he has many. Oh my goodness, he is uh, he's composting Guru Pete for a yeah. reason. We'll yes. we'll link the Colombian article just, in the show notes. Just a wealth of knowledge. With Seriously. That man. Um, <laughs> and last but not least, we were able to wrap everything up by discussing the inventive ways Stacy has found to make leftovers last even longer. Not only has she found out how to repurpose scraps that would otherwise be put into the compost, she's found a way to make it fun. So with her culinary background and interest in creating unique fusion meals with old food, Stacey is an icon for scrappy cooking. We've had the honor of working with her for multiple events and presentations, uh, and they're always engaging, informative, and creative. So be sure to take a look at her recipe book and the presentation that's linked in our show notes for this episode. And we want to thank everyone again who has gone on this journey with us for Food Waste Prevention Week. We appreciate your time. Mm -hmm. To tackle the issue of food waste is to save money, save the environment, and save people. Thank you for tuning into this show. We hope you'll take what you learned here and become a food waste prevention hero as well. To learn more about what Clark County Solid Waste Programs are doing about food waste, visit clarkgreenneighbors.org forward slash FWPW. Thank you again.